Okay, continuing on in our lessons about the Smith chart, we're going to learn what happens when we add a shunt inductor or capacitor to our network. Firstly, we need to know that parallel components use the admittance chart, not the impedance chart. We can find our reflection coefficient for the admittance chart, similarly to how we did the impedance. Gamma is equal to y minus y sub zero over y plus y sub zero, where y sub zero is the characteristic admittance. We can, of course, normalize this. And we would find that gamma is equal to little y minus one over little y plus one if it's normalized. And again, recall that y sub zero is our characteristic admittance. Y sub zero can be any value, but typically it is 20 millisiemens. Okay, we're going to begin by adding a shunt capacitance. Now recall that we're going to be dealing in susceptance rather than reactance, and capacitive susceptance is positive and inductive susceptance is negative. So when we add our shunt capacitor that has a value of j little bc, we find that the total admittance is the sum of the original admittance plus this capacitor. We can find the total susceptance by subtracting the initial susceptance from the final susceptance and unnormalizing by multiplying by the characteristic admittance and then find our capacitance as the susceptance over the frequency. So if I look at this on the chart, we have some starting value of susceptance B1 our capacitor moves on a line of constant conductance downward until it reaches the final value. We read that off of the edge of the chart, B sub F, and then we apply the procedure to find the value of the capacitance. It should be noted that the movement is with increasing C or frequency. Next, we're going to add a shunt inductor. The shunt inductor has a value of minus JBL. And again, if we look into the network past the inductance that we've just added, we can find the total admittance. Y sub T is equal to G1 plus J times B1 minus BL. We can then find the value of the inductive susceptance as BF minus B initial, denormalize it by the characteristic admittance, As we noted on the impedance chart, we generally note the far edge of the chart here as a short circuit rather than an open circuit. So if we talk about our movement rules, if we decrease the inductance, it moves up on a line of constant conductance. Uh, and that's also true if we uh, decrease the frequency. If we increase the capacitance or the frequency, it moves down on a line of constant conductance, both towards the short circuit. Next, let's see what happens when we add a shunt resistor. So here we're going to add a shunt resistor with a conductance value of little g to our network. We can find the total admittance looking into the network as g1 plus little g plus j b1. We note that Adding the conductance to the network does not change the imaginary part of the network. 
So if we look at our movement, we're going to move on a line of constant susceptance. As we increase G, it will go towards the short circuit. We also note that when we add that conductance, it has no frequency dependence. So we can come up with our movement rules for the conductance. So first we note that the final value of the conductance is equal to GF minus G1 times the normalizing emittance. And we note that if we wanted to convert this to a resistance, it would just be one over G. So decreasing R, which is the same as increasing G, moves on a line of constant susceptance towards the short circuit. So with that, we can come up with a few generalized rules uh, to do a matching procedure using the Smith chart. And I note that uh, we know how to use the paper chart now, but it's common to use internet tools. And if you just Google the Smith chart, you'll find a few of those.